Training Weekend, uh, working with our PR team at Haynes & Co. Um, we were brainstorming for ideas to continue to change the conversation about Hollywood, and the past food tours we've had have been very successful, and we noticed there's a lot of new places that had opened up since the last time we did. So we got a group of about 10 different writers and food bloggers, um, some of them have been on our tours before, some of them were new people that we've been trying to get for a while. So it was a good group of 10 people. We started at Demitas on Coinga, and a lot of people thought of that just as a coffee shop, so they were really surprised to find out that they have a full food menu for uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we were lucky enough to sample some of the menu items. They're uh, very big on seasonal ingredients, so it was strawberry season, so there was a lot of strawberry stuff that we got to try. Um, and they also let us try the coffee, of course, that they roast right there on Coenga. Um, from there, we went to Mama Shelter up to the rooftop, so we could have kind of a bird's eye view of all of Hollywood. Um, they served us some of their specialty cocktails and told us about both restaurants. They now have a separate restaurant up on the roof from the one that was already existing on the ground floor. And then they reminded everybody that they're also a hotel. They do have over 70 guest rooms. Um, from there, we went up to Hollywood Boulevard to create crepes, which is the, just down here a couple blocks. Um, it took over the space that Scooby's Hot Dogs used to be in. Um, and they specialize in handheld crepes so that people can um, eat them while they're walking. So everybody got to have their own custom crepe um, made just for them. And then we went to Hollywood Highland. There's a couple of new restaurants up on the, um, the deck, which is the, the dining court overlooking Hollywood Boulevard. Um, we first went to Ginyo Ramen Express where everybody got to make their own bowl of ramen um, with over, I believe, 15 different toppings that they have there. Um, right next door to that is Pokinometry, which is a pokey restaurant. That's basically a salad of um, different types of fresh fish. Um, you can choose it over rice, salad, um, You're making noodles. me very hungry. I know. <laughs> well, keep in mind that we are eating all of this, like, right in a row. <laughs> Um, so from there, we actually had them take the, the metro. We wanted to show them how easy it is to get around Hollywood with the metro public transportation. So we all took the subway down to Hollywood Vine, where we went to East Town, where Sushi of Gary had just opened. It's kind of a higher end sushi restaurant that started out in New York, and this is the first LA location. So everybody was very impressed with that. Um, and we disseminated information packets about each place so that the bloggers could have all the information at their fingertips. We've already seen quite a few of them have been posting reports and um, articles from the trip. Uh, Chef Jay and Christy Hang, who are two of our very reliable reporters, have already posted full write-ups of the entire tour, and we have a few more that are coming. So next month, um, Narisa is putting together a package of all the press coverage that resulted from that. So I'll, I will share that with you at the next meeting. Are there any questions on that? All right. Um, secondly, um, we are continuing to plan the Only in Hollywood Festival. We actually have a meeting coming up next Thursday with all of our partners. We've been having some meetings with um, WAG, uh, which we've talked about before. Uh, we did recently have a meeting with IMG, a representative from IMG, which is the client of WAG that would potentially be putting on the TAP Beer Festival. Um, at the same time, WAG also has in, kind of introduced us to Mazda, um, and we are starting negotiations with Mazda as a potential sponsor. So we've kind of been identifying how that would work, what would be beneficial for both Mazda and for us as a grassroots arts and music festival. We want to make sure that we stay true to that community um, feeling. So we're proceeding with passion, but we are excited to have a potential major sponsor on board. Um, that meeting is going to be at 2.30 p.m. next Thursday, um, the next Wednesday, sorry, the 22nd. Um, and this is very exciting. We've been working on Make Music Day Hollywood for a while now, and everything has fallen into place. It will be happening this coming Tuesday, the 21st, at the W Hotel Metro Plaza, right to the right of the uh, subway portal. Uh, we do have a lineup of eight different artists who are going to be performing from noon to 8 p.m. Um, the first four are students at MI. MI is working with us as a sponsor and they're providing the, all the sound equipment and the sound technician to run it. Um, we did get a great sponsorship from Easttown so we can compensate all the performers 
plus the melt has donated um, gift cards for everybody to have a meal. So all the performers are really excited about this, the exposure and the opportunity. And we're using it kind of as a springboard to also promote the Only in Hollywood Music and Arts Festival. So if any of you get a, a moment next Tuesday between noon and 8 p.m., please stop by. Uh, it's programmed the whole day, so there'll be different acts throughout the, throughout the event. And the full schedule is online on our website. We have a, a, a page, onlyinhollywood.org slash makemusichollywood. And I would, music, that's national. It's a global. It's a global. A whole world. Oh. And I would just, uh, two things. We're really happy that the W and Metro came on board. We really want them to try this activation because maybe there could be some kind of regular activation of the plaza. Um, and also, please, you know, send us to your 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 work from your employees, your colleagues, you want audience out there, so promote it as much as you Do you can. have an email you can send us to get them forward on? Yeah. We do. Um, we also have, there's a flyer that's in your packet. We can send you this as a JPEG or a PDF. There's a Facebook page, an event page um, that you can actually invite people on. So we'll definitely send that all out to you. Um, lastly, we are still working on the um, Historic Hollywood Boulevard Initiative. We have a meeting on that coming up next. I think that's the one that's on Thursday. That's a week from Thursday. It's on the 30th, right? Yeah, yeah. the 30th. Yeah. yeah, so do you want to... Oh, maybe in April. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about our meeting with Mark Wanamaker? Uh, yes. Uh, we are, April Clemmer has been uh, helping us do the research on this old Hollywood section of Hollywood And I'm assuming you guys kind of know the basic tenets of that. Uh, so uh, Mark Wanamaker, who's a very prolific Hollywood historian, uh, is uh, going to be here. And he's going to be talking about, uh, specifically, um, well, he'll, be, he'll be supporting a lot of the research that we've done in establishing uh, the legacy of this area, how important it has been to Hollywood becoming what it is today. He's going to have a lot of photographs, and he uh, has Bison Archives, and I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's um, really the source that everyone goes to. If anyone is developing anything on the site, they contact Bison Archives. Usually, if they don't have a photo of something, it doesn't exist that we know of. So he's going to be here and talking about um, all of that and just giving us even more insight and ideas into some creative ways that we can get people excited about this section of the boulevard so that's that's what we're going to be discussing he was very excited to hear that this was underway and he thinks we have landed on something that makes sense that this very well could be kind of the original like the origin of Hollywood came out of these several blocks. And I think this is also, a, a, he's a very key person in uh, maybe as aligning with uh, preservationists and local people who are maybe a little leery of new ideas or change because they're going to automatically assume that we're trying to take away history. So I think aligning with him is a really good way uh, for us to um, involve the community positively. This is one maker that we're talking about. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Thompson or Chair, would you like to? Sure. Um, we did not have our security committee meeting uh, this month, so I don't have the robust uh, report that the other committees have put on today, <laughs> uh, which may work well for a time. Um, I carry you want to give us an update on the greater. Um, uh, yeah, it? we we have reported in our newsletter. We were able to get a statement approved by the Salvation Army that um, they are continuing discussions with the Food Coalition to um, possibly invite that program onto their campus. Um, I, you know, have been assured that there will be a meeting with property owners. I sent a list of the property owners to the uh, to the Salvation Army, and I'm going to continue to um, push for that. Um, you know, so it's going to be announced in our newsletter. I think that's going to generate some um, calls and questions, and we're going to be sure to redirect those to the Salvation Army. And the property owners that you sent over, is there anybody in the sun that find it? You know, we, we could. I, I took kind of like, you know, 12 and kind of an immediate radius, but certainly, you know, it's going to be down to well, so the Yeah, because yeah. uh, I think the, those guys uh, at the Sunset Bronson Studios, and I, and I know David Schwartzman is 
is very concerned about that. Okay. I will And then uh, in your packets, we have a um, an amendment to our service agreement with Andrews International um, that we would like to approve today. Uh, we are updating that contract and it speaks to a, a variety of different issues um, which include uh, the branding effort that we have talked about um, trying to get uh, our logos for the various bids onto uniforms and automobiles um, defines our ownership of the repeaters um, there's some various changes to the reports and records uh, provisions. Um, there is uh, some ownership of work product issues, and then some minutia that goes as small as just updating our address. So, uh, once anybody has any questions regarding this, it's something we've been contemplating for several months. Um, I will make a motion to approve the security service agreement amendment as drafted. Great. Is there any discussion prior to second? Is there a second to this? Thank you, Madam. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then one other issue that's not on our agenda that I thought was just FYI, I don't know if many people saw the article in the LA Times about uh, a new ordinance in New York City about there's a certain zone that they've created for the street characters to be photographed um, uh, in. So it's, uh, it's illegal for them to um, solicit um, photographs outside this certain area. And uh, we'll be monitoring that and see how that proceeds. And it might be something that we may want to consider somewhere down the road. But uh, I thought it was interest, an interesting way for them to try to address the, the issue, which obviously is, impacts our very busy sidewalks. I just read the article, so yeah, we'll look into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, nominating committee. So, Chad. Well, yeah, so is Michael on the phone or I'll go ahead? Mike, please. I'm on the phone, but you can go ahead, Chad. Yeah, I was just going to say, well, so um, Michael's brought to the table, or he's already had a couple of uh, phone interviews, um, a woman named uh, Julie Hudman, and she's the CEO of uh, Saban um, on, on Hollywood, um, maybe about two blocks that's south of like the W Hotel. Um, anyways, I, mean, I just met her um, an hour ago. I spoke with her on the phone with her, but she's a, she seems really dynamic. Um, and it was also another member of Gray had met with her too. Um, she just seems fantastic. She's concerned about public health. She has three degrees. Um, I, what was interesting for me when talking with her was talking about the clinic and the change in the homeless people that they see coming into it. And I think that could be valuable information for us, because I think we've talked about a lot about the homeless, um, security issues, and I think it's going to kind of parallel. So, um, you know, Michael, we haven't talked about it yet, but I do think she's a very strong candidate that we're probably going to recommend at next month's uh, board meeting. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be good to get somebody in that field back on this board. We have Ron Radicky for several years, mm -hmm. a nonprofit that's yes. you know dedicated to social services. Yeah, and she seems really, you know, she's she's fresh. She's she's just been with them just over nine months, but she has a big public health background, Washington D.C., um, and excited to come in, lots of ideas, and and was a big fan of, of Carrie. So I think there's a line right there too, which is always positive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you, um, next week, well, by the end of the month, you will have the opportunity to appoint a new nominating committee. And then um, those um, applications will go out in the mail to the property owners this weekend. Okay, July. and then what we'll do is we'll also get out a schedule 
to everybody's turn and it expires because for those people that are um, up and who'd like to come back, you cannot serve on a nominating committee. So, therefore, um, can just be aware there's a schedule that we have to adhere to. Um, is that the third? Yeah, so um, I uh, wanted to report on a couple of things here. First of all, I want to bring up the date on our public records request from Dr. Riskin here in the back of the room. Um, as you know, last month uh, you adopted a new policy and it had uh, some things just to help put a sense of structure into what is obviously a very um, kind of consistent presence in this office. Um, since you adopted that policy, he has already submitted another, I think, 19 requests uh, just in less than a month. Uh, that's on top of the 18 that are pending from before the policy was adopted. So we obviously continue to take very seriously his right to um, request this information. We have um, uh, in implemented a new appointment policy, um, and uh, Dr. Riskin is having a hard time adhering to that. He uh, showed up on Monday without an appointment. So I think we have reached a, an agreement that he will, in fact, respect that. You know, we are a small staff and we are in the middle of Hollywood Boulevard and it is um, sometimes we're here alone and we keep our door locked. So for good reason, we make uh, ourselves available uh, and we try to work with members of the public who want to come into this office and I think we do a pretty good job of being accessible. But I will tell you another reason why, you know, I think we do have to be concerned about the safety of the staff is a, um, a blog post that Dr. Riskin wrote this week, and I will just read this to you. He has a picture of a neutron bomb uh, exploding, and it says, this would be an effective, emotionally satisfying, and poetically just way to get rid of business improvement districts, but I'm hoping for something a little more environmentally friendly. And the title of the blog is How to Destroy Business Improvement Districts in California, a theory. And um, you know, I personally find it very offensive, especially given the events in this country, that um, somebody would actually uh, suggest that our organization or any of these other bids in California should be blown up. So um, I'm gonna you know, kind of pursue what measures we're entitled to take just to preserve the safety of the staff. And of course, I just wanted to keep the board informed about that. Okay. Now, moving on to other things. Um, we have been, as I, you know, you know, beginning to kind of like look at all of our various options with respect to how to design our bid in, in the new season. And so the staff <clears throat> is using um, the opportunity to go visit other bids. We're gonna go visit the Long Beach bid next week. Um, we, we spent time with the South Park bid a couple weeks ago. Um, we, we had Sarah doing research for, for uh, us uh, looking at how other bids are structured. And last week we were on a conference call with Sacramento and I just want to pass along a couple of, of interesting findings because I think you know it's really important that we be thinking very expansively about what the possibilities are in the next decade. So the Sacramento bid, um, uh, is the, the Sacramento Downtown Partnership is a 501c6 organization, which is what we are as well, with 37 board members. And they meet every other month, but they have an executive committee that then meets you know, in the interim months. But they also have a 501c3 organization, which is something that we're really interested in learning more about, and, and we are finding that more and more bids are doing this. And that 501c3 organization, which was formed in 2011, has a five member board. Um, they use this um, organization to um, uh, bring in grant money into the community, event money, sponsorships, et cetera. They bring in $1.2 million a year in, in outside funds. So for the downtown Sacramento partnership, um, the bid assessment is only about half of the income to support all of the activities in downtown Sacramento, which is interesting. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that with respect to their assessment formula, they only um, assess on lot size and building square footage, nothing on front footage, which is interesting because the preponderance of our assessment is based on front footage. So again, it's, this is like an opportunity to be thinking you know, differently and we're gonna look more into the logic of that. But they also have um, six zones of benefit and 
I wanted to point out to you that we are in the process of ordering a big wall map. It's going to be this whole wall. <laughs> and um, before you leave today, I would like you to take a look at the area around your property because we're working with, is it Cartifact? Yeah. So Cartifact is using this as, a, as an opportunity to update their Hollywood map. And what we want to do with this map, we're going to, um, and we're going to uh, install it on, on, on like a, a solid surface, but with a writable surface over the top, so we can play with boundaries and, and drawing on it. But you'll notice on the map that they'll, they'll have something like, like a particular restaurant, which may not belong to this world, so we probably would encourage them to not put that restaurant, maybe just put the address. So if you have any suggestions, go ahead and write on it on how to make that more accurate. But what Sacramento does, which is something that we're interested in looking at as well, is instead of having zones of benefit that extend along linear streets, they have like little sub-districts. So if you think about Sacramento, they've got, this is an example, they got Old Sacramento is its own um, zone of benefit, and the K Street corridor, the area around the government buildings, or the, the family <coughs> district. So imagine look, taking Hollywood and actually, you know, just drawing little sub-district boundaries around it and having a zone of benefit. They also have two areas that pay a nighttime security assessment <coughs> because they have nighttime activities. Um, so that also is, is an idea that we thought about as well. <coughs> One final thing that's interesting about Sacramento is that you know we've, we've been learning that we're going to have to um, account for what portion of our budget is general versus special benefit. And their budget, uh, they determined, was 19% <coughs> general benefit. So they've had to raise, you know, 19 of their overall budget from um, non-assessment revenue. That's the highest in the state. Big number. Big number. So, anyways, we will continue to, um, you know, do this research, and then I think probably, you know, late summer, early fall, we're going to want to kind of share with you in its totality all that we've learned from the rest of the state, so you can begin kind of thinking about, you know, what makes sense for Hollywood. Hey, Terry. Um, so, what was interesting? When you're saying lot size and square footage, that's kind of an interesting metric. I'd recommend you take a, a sample of some of the data and run those numbers. Just, just see the impact, especially going into a renewal. You know what I'm saying? Like we've got a gigantic building, and it's there's lots of pros, hopefully, you know, some pros and cons, but it'd just be interesting because I think that could impact if the fees really swing on some people versus another, that could be a detriment. Yeah. yeah. I just think, yeah, so let's just run it just to see the number of Yeah, and he mentioned that the condos in downtown Sacramento only get assessed on building square footage, so therefore they get a pretty deep discount because they're obviously not assessed on the parcel size. Anyway, so that's that's that. We're, this is really actually kind of fun, I think, to look at new ways of doing things. And then the last thing is that we're, we're still planning to do the bus tour of the two bids on July 26th, so I'll I'll you know, send you a reminder. We'll spend a couple hours just driving up and down the streets and just seeing the different pockets. It's important for you to kind of maybe see parts of the bid, two bids that you're not aware of, and then we'll finish with lunch somewhere. Um, maybe talk about this. Oh, yes. Okay. And then July 13th, finally, I never thought it would happen, but uh, the center at Blessed Sacrament is going through its final touches of oh, renovation to $2 million project. It's beautiful. It's amazing. So um, I do hope you can come to that. It's, it's a fundraiser, uh, uh, but you will be amazed to see the transformation of the place, which was held together with duct tape before. And then we did talk about this yeah. already, so Sharon was here. Oh. And with that, we are done ahead of time. <laughs>